A few months ago, I got rear-ended in my Golf. If I'd been driving my Lotus, I'd be dead. So, how did cars get so much safer between my Lotus and my Golf? And more importantly, who do we have to thank for it? Well, as it turns out, I'm alive because of the work of a bunch of people I'd never even heard of. People who worked for decades to bring crash safety into a world that wasn't ready. So today, I'm going to tell you all about the pioneers of crash safety, and then I'll explain exactly how each of them helped save my life. Alright guys, I'm going to be honest with you. I was a little hesitant to claim that this crash damage was enough to kill me if I was in the Lotus. Not because it's not enough, it definitely is, but because most people do not understand what a death trap the Lotus Europa is. Now, it was built in 1969, but honestly the crash structure is more similar to something built in the 1920s. The whole car is basically a crumple zone, so if you crash in one of these, the big risk is that you're going to get crushed inside. Starting in the 1950s, most car makers started making cars really rigid. This does prevent you from getting crushed, but it introduces another problem. If you run into something, then the time that you have to change speed depends on how much the car deflects. If there's no collapsing zone designed in, then the car accelerates super quickly. If that acceleration is too high, you'll be killed even if your body doesn't hit anything else. Now, what you want is a nice slow acceleration spread out over a long period of time. That's where our first guy comes in. Bela Berenyi, an Austrian-Hungarian engineer who worked for Mercedes, was actually the first one to pair a rigid driver cell with crumple zones that reduce acceleration in a crash. Now, Berenyi invented this concept all the way back in 1939, but it took almost 20 years before Mercedes put it into a car, and 10 years after that, most car makers were still building rigid bodies. Berenyi was a total visionary. He developed the crumple zone decades before it actually ended up in cars, and this invention alone saved thousands and thousands of people, including me. And I didn't even know his name. Honestly, it was a little nutty realizing I didn't know who invented the crumple zone. And then I learned about Niels Bolin, who invented the seatbelt. Sort of. The original seatbelt was actually developed before the car by a guy named Edward Claghorn and the original three-point belt was invented by DeHaven and Griswold. Boland's contribution was to take the separate shoulder and lap belts developed by Griswold and turn it into a single belt that was anchored in three places. Now, that might not sound like a big deal, but it was a huge step forward in both manufacturability and, more importantly, ease of use. But I think there's another reason that Boland attributed with the seatbelt. In the 10 years after he worked out his version of the three-point belt, he put together a study of 28,000 car accidents in Sweden. This eventually led to the passing of the requirement of seatbelts in the United States. To understand why it took so long to get something as obvious as the seatbelt approved, we need to understand the United States post-war auto industry. Automobile deaths in the United States increased dramatically between the 1940s and the 1960s. And I think we can attribute this to three things. First, post-war America was wealthy, so more Americans had access to cars. Second, cars were getting faster. To compete with each other, American car makers kept increasing horsepower, which in turn yielded higher top speeds. And third, American car makers decided safety wasn't their problem. They claimed their vehicles weren't inherently unsafe and that it was bad driver behavior that caused deaths. To their credit, the American public didn't really seem to care. This was a generation that fought World War II. The idea that cars could pose a public safety threat just wasn't something they took seriously. Until 1965. Ralph Nader, a lawyer whose friend was paralyzed in a car accident, published Unsafe at Any Speed, a scathing account of the auto industry's safety practices. Public sentiment turned against the American auto industry basically overnight. The fallout got so bad that GM actually hired a private investigator to trail Nader, and they even tapped his phone. But it didn't work. In 1966, Congress passed a law establishing basic motor vehicle safety standards. And today, that's the same law that's required for basically all the crash testing standards in the United States. Now, what's interesting to me about this is that Nader wasn't an engineer. From some of the stuff in Unsafe at Any Speed, it's actually pretty clear his knowledge of vehicle dynamics and vehicle safety wasn't that deep. He probably couldn't have invented the three-point seatbelt, and he definitely couldn't have invented the crumple zone. But he found a way to build on the work that Bolin, Berenyi, DeHaven, Griswold, Clackhorn, and lots of others had already done. And as a result, about 60 years later, I got to walk away. 
There's one more group of people that I want to thank, and that's the people who designed and built all the safety systems on my golf. But there's a problem. I don't know who they are. I mean, I know somebody had to develop the rear crumple zone, and that that person is probably the reason I didn't break my neck or worse. Somebody else had to make sure the seat stayed mounted to the chassis, and a whole team had to set up and run the test to make sure the gas tank didn't puncture. All in all, I would guess there were probably about 100 people at Volkswagen responsible for making sure this car was safe. And other than some of the company leads, I don't even know their names, let alone what they did. These are my unsung heroes. Not just guys like Bolin and Berenyi, who to be fair, completely deserve to be famous. But I have a special soft spot for the ones who went in every day to do work they knew was important, knowing full well they might never get thanked for it. So to those people, thank you. I really enjoyed getting to share these guys' stories with you today. If you want, you can go ahead and check out my other videos, or you can subscribe for when I come out with more. In any case, thank you so much for watching.